Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level, and welcome to a new series where I'm just going to actually rig this knight character here. Head on over to my Gumroad account if you want to grab all the files from this series. Uh, I'll only put the beginning and the end there so you can follow along if you want, and then if you do get lost along the way there will be another file that represents the end of the video. My goal is to actually bring this into a game engine, so I'll be doing some things on the rig to allow for these animations to transfer. And this will be less of a tutorial and more of just a walkthrough on how I'd rig something for production. I'm going to hit problems along the way, I'm going to hit road bumps, but I'm going to solve them live and just show you my problem solving method when it comes to rigging, blender, and asset creation. Let's get right to it. So in the file I just have a couple things. I have my knight character object here, I have my shield, and I have my sword. I'm going to build a deform rig first. So I'm going to come back to this later on and talk about why we need a deform rig and a control rig. This will be something I'll touch on on future videos. So I'm going to do shift A. I'm going to add an armature, single world bone. I'll just rename this deform rig or knight deform rig. With this selected, I just flip to edit mode. I'm just going to add the spine node first. So I'm just going to put this here and lift it up a little bit. I'm going to rename as I go as well. So this is just spine. 0, 1. I'll grab this down and I'll hit E to extrude it up. So I'm just going to add three spine bones here. And this will be spine 02. Blender has this way of renaming it where it adds dot 002 or 003 at the end. I'm just going to keep it simple with an underscore for now. I'm going to hit E to extrude one down as well too. And this is just going to be the pelvis bone. And I'll just duplicate this one over. I'm going to do a couple things right now. I'm going to turn on X mirror axes. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, it's just so that this mirrors as I work. I'm just going to rename this to hip01 underscore left or underscore L. Just duplicate this over and just change it to R. Now, as I move these, they'll actually move together. So this will let me just mirror things as I work. So I'm just going to place this up here. I'll place this at the base of the pelvis. And it's just a hip joint for the top of my leg. It's going to hit E to bring this down. This is going to be my leg joint. I'll just rename it real quick. I'll just extrude it down again. Now that broke right there actually because I didn't rename the mirrored side. It doesn't rename it automatically for you. You have to actually go in and rename these as you go as well too. There's a whole other way to do this where you click on armature and you go to symmetrize. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do that way. I'm just going to delete these. I'm going to turn off X mirror before I delete it, actually. On this one, I'll just I'll just do the left side and just rename it as I go. So this one I'm talking about with problem solving as I go, where I just switch sort of a workflow method as I work. I was trying something and I didn't like the way it was working. I don't like having to constantly rename the left or the right bone. So I'm just going to use the symmetrize option right at the end. I'm just going to flip to profile just so I can get the knee in place. I'm just selecting bones and just hitting G to move them. Um, I'm not actually using the transform gizmo. I find it's a lot quicker just to move them with the G hotkey here. So I'll just extrude my foot here and then I'm going to add one for the toe here. I'm going to add this to the middle of the toe Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring this right to the ground. I think that's going to help me later on. I'll just rename this to toe underscore 01 underscore L. Whoops. And I'll rename this one to foot underscore 01 underscore L. I'm not too worried about my naming convention on this rig. It doesn't need to be the perfect convention. Just something that's going to work for this character. Okay, so that's looking good right there. Um, now I'm going to work on the shoulder area. So I'm just going to duplicate this up and this is going to be my clavicle. Clavicles are very important when you're animating. Most of the arm action will actually come from the clavicle, not from the shoulder, which tends to actually be a bit more restricted even though it is a ball pivot joint. This is actually going to connect to this spine bone here. So I'll just do control P keep offset and I'll duplicate this down. So my shoulder is actually right here. Um, 
but he's a bit of a weird character where he's actually got this shoulder joint here. So just for right now, I am going to add another control here. And I am going to rename this to shoulder 01 left. Let's duplicate down my elbow and I'll duplicate down to the wrist. And I'll do the hand right now too. These I actually want them to be in a line. So one thing I'll do with that is I'll hit S and then I'll hit the X key and then I'll type zero and it just lines them all up perfectly on the X axis. So a lot of renaming right now. So this is arm 01 left. This is arm 02 left. Just rename this to hand. So fingers, fingers can usually take a while. Um, I'm just gonna hide the shield and the sword while I look at this. Actually, I might isolate the hand. There is one way you can isolate in uh, Blender. If you do Alt B, you'll be able to select a border area, but it'll isolate it to whatever's selected there. There's a way that you can isolate parts of a geometry almost to a camera clipping plane. Again, I did that with Alt B, and if you just click Alt B again, that'll go away. So I'll do Alt B again, and just select the hand. Now I've isolated the hand without having to remove it from the geometry. Okay, so I'm just gonna place this at the wrist and I'll drag this down. And I'm just gonna drag this over for the finger. I'll place this up here. I'm just gonna flip on wireframe as I did add a couple of joints there or dials there for those pieces. What I did right there is I just flipped the color to single, just so that I could have one uh, sort of shader on there, which my main texture is actually very dark, so this will allow me to kind of place these fingers right on those edges that I've placed earlier. Just hitting extrude to bring these down. I'll select all of these and just do S, Y, 0 to line them up. Now I'll just duplicate them over. I'm just sort of eyeballing the pivots right now. Here's the great thing about Blender. If you're coming from Maya, you'll probably want to bind everything, but make sure your pivots are correct. If you want to change your pivots, you kind of have to unbind and you might have to weight paint again. I don't know if this has changed or if they've built tools to fix this. In Blender, you can change the pivots anytime you like. You can add bones anytime you like. The vertex information is connected to the object, not the rig. So you can almost delete the rig, maintain the vertex information or the vertex weighting, the bind more or less, without having to worry about uh, rebinding or rebuilding at any time. Which is one of the nice features about rigging in Blender. I know there's a lot of things that are kind of missing from the Maya side, but it kind of helps, or I find it's a lot more free when you can just add bones and change pivots dynamically on a deformed rig. Okay, so this is in place. Um, I'm gonna name these index, middle, ring, pinky, and thumb. I'm just gonna speed up my renaming here, and then I'll come back in a second to go to the head and the neck. Okay, so that's renamed. I want to get rid of this clipping plane, so I'll just hit Alt B and it'll show the entire character again. On the arm, I'm just going to add a couple things. This upper arm or lower arm control here, I'm just going to duplicate it over and move it right here. This is going to be my wrist armor control here. So I'm going to shift click on this arm and I'll do Control P, keep offset. Again, I'm going to duplicate uh, this one right here. Actually, I'm going to duplicate this one here and move it here. And this will be the upper armor, so I'll connect it to this one right here. I'll do Control P, keep offset. Oops, Control P. Oh, it's already connected. If it's already child of it, it won't give me the keep offset option. It'll only show the connected option. So that means that this one is already a parent of this one right here, where I was trying to parent it to anyway. Okay, I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to duplicate this down. This is going to be my sword control or my shield control, uh, whichever is on either side. So let's call this extra. Or, yeah, I'll call it extra because it's extra. I'll just rename these really quick. 
Okay, so let's go to the head, the neck, and the eyes. These shouldn't be too bad. Um, I'm just going to grab the spine control. Let's move it down a little bit. I do want one joint for the neck. He doesn't really have a neck, but I do want that ability to sort of twist the character's head like that. So just place that up there, rename this neck, and I'll just extrude it again for the head. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm just going to duplicate this up, and this is going to be the helmet. So I want it to be its own piece. Um, I might want to shake that helmet as it's moving around, so that's why I'm going to add an extra node there. And I'm going to add one more down here, and this is going to be lower helmet. If he's running and all his armor is like clanking around, I want each of these to have their own little keep alive movement, which even a game engine can handle too. But if you don't rig it, you won't have it available. I'm going to rig this little piece over here too. Call it uh, helmet tail, I guess. This one, I am going to go down the length of it here, like this. Okay, that's looking nice. Um, Let's just add two controls for the eyes. So I just need one, actually. We'll just duplicate the clavicle up. And I'll just quickly put the eye control in world space. Now, I put this in world space, but the roll is off. And I'll show you what I mean. If I go to front view, it's got this weird axis to it. I can just come to item under roll and just put that as zero. And I'll just call this eye left or one. All right, so this is looking good right now. I do want to pull this eye forward a bit. I'll just get this in the correct location. Okay, that's looking good right there. I'm just going to do one cleanup pass on all my naming just to make sure everything's good, and then we'll mirror this over. Okay, all my naming looks fine. I just want to do a couple things and connect some of these pieces. So the pelvis down here, I'm going to shift click on the spine, do control P, keep offset. The hip control, I'm just going to connect to the pelvis, do control P, keep offset. So that's looking good for my hierarchy. Um, I do have some naming issues here where Blender did do its own naming system, so I'll just fix that real quick. Okay, my hierarchy is looking good. I'm gonna do one more thing. I just wanna select everything and just look at all the names here. I'm gonna use code for this, so I'm gonna to go to the console. Uh, I want the object, which is object, and it's the first one here. Oh, I guess not because it's not selected. Let me try that again. I think it was selected, but it wasn't active, which is a funny thing in Blender where something can be selected sometimes, but not active. So I'm going to go to, I'll just do pose.bones. And that's going to give me all the bones there. So let's rename this bones. Say for bone in bones, print bone.name. Cool, that just gives me a list of all the bone names here. So I can just look at them like this. I do like looking at in the hierarchy too, but I just kind of want to get a list of everything just to make sure none of the naming is off here before I go to the next step. This is also great if you ever want to just rename everything really quickly, but we'll get into that later as well too. Okay, so this is ready. I'm going to do one last thing and that's to basically mirror everything over. So I'm going to select everything. I'm back in edit mode. I'm going to go to armature, symmetrize. So what that's going to do is basically mirror over the entire rig and rename everything for me. Now I have a problem and I'm going to show you what the problem was. And that's that my helmet names had left in them. So it actually mirrored my helmet and all my helmet pieces where I want that right down the axis. So I'm going to undo a bit and I have to actually rename all of these. I just got to get the L out of the name. So that's a really quick rename. So naming is huge when you're rigging. Um, even if you want to write tools on this later on, it's good to have some sort of convention, which I will be doing with some code, just to add some control bones quickly. Now, this is a mistake that I made, so you're kind of seeing how I'm finding these mistakes and just correcting them as I go. That's good. And all the spine nodes are good there. Okay, let's try that again. I think it's based on selection too, so I'm just going to actually just select the left side when I do this, just so it doesn't mirror anything down the center. And I'll do armature, whoops, I lost my selection, armature, symmetrize. Cool. That's looking good. So that's part one. Uh, just look at my hierarchy one more time. Yep. I'll do one last thing. My data is named armature. I'll just call this knight deform rig as well. Oh, I forgot my clavicle here. I'll just click on it and go to armature, symmetrize that one. So my clavicle is not mirroring. 
it did not mirror with the rest of the character with the rest of the shape and that's because it's actually named wrong i have the l in the middle of the name blender likes the l at the end of the name or between dots like that so i'm just gonna leave the l at the end of the name i can go to armature symmetrize so if it's not mirroring it's it might be because of a naming issue same thing if you're trying to do th something where you have same thing if you have x mirror axes on sometimes it won't work if they're not actually connected or the naming is not correct Okay, this is looking good. In the next video, I'll dive into weight painting in 2.8, and I will struggle through trying to get all of the weights applied to here, uh, specifically on the hands, the elbows, and the shoulders. And then from there, hopefully we can add a control rig. A big thank you to my patrons for supporting this video. Uh, they've been waiting quite a while for this one. I did promise this one a while ago. Head on over there if you want to see some exclusive content, some behind the scenes, and some early access to a lot of these videos. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.